So I want a really big round of applause for this month's speaker, Pong Yi Wai. Good morning, everyone. I'm Wai Pong Yu. I do drawing. Um, today's topic is ritual. So ritual is a regular dedication to a purpose for good. For me, the two good purposes are to open up obstructed passages and to collect levels of reality kept apart from one another. And there are four elements in this dedication, universality, solemnity, offering, and darkness. What I would like to show you now are four pieces of contemporary artwork. And to, illust to illustrate these four elements, and then I will show you how I see these elements in my own practice. So the first one, it's a poem written by English poet, Philip Larkin. Um, the poem is written in 1954. Let's look at the last stanza. And I should raise in the east a glass of water where any angled light would congregate endlessly. I hope you will immediately feel that there is an effortless daily ritual which is so powerful it has so much strong faith in it. And when you do carry out this ritual, you don't even notice any weight, burden, even greatness of it. Perhaps this is not just an act of hope, but it's asking you to reflect on the conflicts happening in the world right now imposed by religious beliefs. So in a way that the element of universality here in the poem challenges the hypocrisy and exclusiveness of the religions. Are our religions today always protecting all human beings? Or they only see themselves at the center of the world and so their own kind as superior to others? So they can deny the basic human rights of the enemies, civilians during conflicts. The next one is a video work by artist Zhang Pei Li. He invited a prominent news reader to read the definitions of water from a classical Chinese dictionary. The way she reads the text is very professional. Every word is pronounced clearly, perfectly. And her reading really projects the power of a language tool, just like the way she projects the power of the state the authoritarian state. The artist uses the solemnity of the presentation to criticize political tools, which often have this sense of formality. In an authoritarian state, solemnity could be just a way to cover up state brutality and crime. This is a performance um, done by artist He Yunchang. He Yunchang travels back to his hometown offer his blood to the motherland. In this work, he has open wound in his arm. He's hung upside down for 30 minutes, and his blood flows into the river through the knife in his hands. The knife actually cuts the river in two, making a long wound several kilometers long. The artist's blood also flows along the wound of the river. In this ritual, his blood activates the sorrow hidden in the landscape. His soul acts without showing his face. He seems to be minus the pain suffered by many unknown individuals over a long passage of time. Artist Ronnie Horn was commissioned to do a project about the River Thames. Her research led her to realize that the darkness of the river is not just about the urban pollution, but an expression of the victims in many murder and suicide cases. In the dark water, there are dead bodies. And when you look at the swirling current of the water, 
you might be witnessing the unending sorrows and grievances. The water itself could be a ritual, perpetuating the unending and settling feelings. But isn't water supposed to console and heal? Learning from these artists, we can say that the four elements can transform into new understandings. And this really helped me develop my understanding about my own practice. So here, universality requires effortlessness. Solemnity can serve as a mirror of hypocrisy. And offering will lead to activation. Darkness is a part of the nature of truth. This is a detail of my drawing, just like here. Um, I use a ballpoint pen and draw lots of lines on paper. Well, the tool is very common, so it's a symbol for universality. And when I use it, I'm not distracted by coloring, cleaning, as with brush. And I can focus on connecting feelings and thoughts um, with the marks on the paper. So for me, this is a way of emancipation, a freedom of channeling. Well, many years ago, when I first started um, to draw lines, I would think it's about uh, perfection. So I would separate the dogs and the lines. Why? Because I think the dogs, which I call ink shit, um, yeah, come from the accumulation of the ballpoint tip. And it's dirty, it's negative, and it's about death. And so I discarded them on another sheet of paper. But then I realized that this is not the reality. So if I do respect reality, um, the lies and dogs should go together. And so getting out of the obsession with profession, treating the dogs as important as the lies, for me, it's a solemn act of reality recognition. And this is me using a ballpoint pen to draw lines following the curve of the previous one. So, um, effortlessness gives me a sense of emancipation and then respecting the reality um, is solemnity. What you are seeing here is a detail of a mural painting in Dunhuang. It depicts a fascinating Buddha story about a prince sacrificing himself to feed a starving tigress and her cubs. When I imagine a painter dedicated to painting this scene in a cold and dark cave, holding on to his strong faith and in the compassion of humankind, and hoping for a change in the world, uh, it really inspires me. And in my first open studio project, I have a very long scroll installed from the ceiling, falling, falling like a waterfall, and I sit at the bottom of the waterfall like a small rock and draw. So when visitors come, I invite them to have coffee and tea and chat with me and tell me a story. And there are sad stories like traumatic childhoods, office bullying, um, lost beloved ones, and many discussion on art and society. Well, it's a valuable learning experience for me where I learn not to focus on myself, not to be judgmental, and to listen. Drawing for me is like self-reflection. When I draw alone, I confront my dark side. I would also like my visitors, the storytellers, to share the story from the dark side in my open studio project. I hope that witnessing the drawing process can encourage them to be honest. Because when I draw, I have no way to hide. And Everything is exposed. I do not fix. I do not retrace the drawn lines. So I hope that the drawing process can serve as a safe and honest uh, 
condition for mutual trust and exchange for um, visitors and me. As you can see, the four original uh, elements have transformed significantly, but these ideas only take shape in a comfortable studio space. So from last October to February this year, I had the chance to uh, participate in an artist residency program in Wuhan. I did the same open studio project in my studio, and I listened to people's story. And I also took the scroll, this one, um, to many abandoned sites in the city where hardly we could see anybody. But this gave me the chance to listen to the space, to empty windows, to dead plants, um, to the rocks. And I feel I can connect more with my body. I can sense the warmth of the soil, which is actually quite cold. Um, and my left hand can make marks on the soil, on the soil that resonate uh, my drawn lines. I think the most special thing about drawing outdoors is that I can realize the feelings, I can uh, release the feelings and thoughts of the storytellers into the space and into the universe. And right now, I'm back in my studio, continuing the Hong Kong scroll that I started in 2019 during the political turmoil. And it was a difficult time for me. And drawing was a way to heal. So I would like to make a big scale drawing embracing collective consciousness. The scroll is 12 meters long. Well, although I spent six months at the gallery um, in 2022, I still haven't finished it. So um, that's why I'm continuing my um, open studio project at my studio. So. Here is my studio address and my Instagram, and yeah, you can find more information on it. And let's recap my presentation today about the topic ritual. Well, ritual is a regular dedication to a purpose for good. And the four elements in this dedication have gone through significant uh, transformation for me. And from my experiences, um, yeah, ritual can foster empathy and release messages to the universe. And that's a much simpler way to put it, that ritual can mean friendship. I would like to leave you with this haiku where you see a ritual on a very small scale. Icicles and water all differences dissolved, drip down together. Thank you. You brought some artwork as well. Yes. And this is the one you brought with you to Wuhan. That's right. Um, how many uh, hours have you worked on this particular one? Um, I think I, I spent two months time in my studio and then I have several days out in the city and then I finished the last part in Hong Kong. So possibly three months, I guess. It's four meters long. Wow, four meters long. Um, and this uh, meant a break from your other project, which you're still working on today. And mm. everyone is invited over yes. to join you. Yes, you can come today, so come tomorrow. Thank you, Peng Yu. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know, I, it, sound, it seems that um, your ritual is very meditative. So what are you meditating on? Or different things? Are, are you posing things that distress you? Or is it just a prayer time? Or I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, actually. Oh, um, actually, I don't practice meditation. Um, perhaps um, drawing is a way of meditation yeah, for me. Right. Um, but you know, there are lots of you know, chaos in, in my mind. So I think um, drawing is a way to smoothen it um, and to uh, give some rationality. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great way 
to confront the darkness. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank Hi. you for your presentation. Good. How do we read your, your artwork? Assuming you're not in the room presenting, how would we actually understand this drawing versus another one? You mean like this one? Like yeah. For how, example. how would I like you to read it? For example, sure. Mm. I don't know. Actually, everyone has their own angle and perspective. Um, well, for me, I see it as a mental landscape. Um, I see the lines are um, minds of people, um, and they are resonating each other. Um, and I think you can always find some yeah, landscape element in the, in the drawing and they can be comforting and they can be destructive at the same time. Um, yeah, but that's just, just, just my own way because I, 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 I mean, I see it every day. <laughs> um, but actually, I, I, maybe you can yeah, talk about yours, if anything. Yeah. Well, I'll catch up quickly. Just, just so related to this idea of chaos that you mentioned, etc. I mean, I was just wondering, this, this kind of the ridge that I can see sort of as part of the, the drawing, if it's really chaotic, is it very kind of all over the place, or is it sort of a straight line, or etc., etc.? Does, um, that, does that make sense? For example, mm. just a thought. Um, well, for me, like later as I talk about um, the way I draw, there are many things happening in my mind. So the lines actually um, contain lots of different things and yeah, they can be very contradictive. So, um, yeah, um, I don't know. I, I think um, it's like I'm, I'm providing a model answer. I think, yeah, I, I, I would prefer to listen to viewers and then maybe it's better to we have a discussion on it. Well, thank you. Thank you for the sharing. Thank I think you. I think it's just fantastic to hear how you reflect on your work and share with us the four elements. I'm quite interested in how did you, at the beginning, when you were searching for your rituals, for searching for your way of your styles, um, how did you settle on this format? Okay. Um, I was a art student and um, I was just spending my time in a library and then I just found drawing lines, just, I was just doodling. So then I just found, oh, it, it really helped expressing myself. So I think I should uh, make a drawing just with lines. And then I, 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 I draw a space I fear most with lines. And then um, I think, okay, maybe I, I can get out from it. Then I just draw lines. And then I, I, I use different materials like oil um, on canvas, on, on, on shirts, on uh, wood. Um, and finally, I, I, I settled on paper because I feel that, yeah, I think this, this also helped meditation as well, that the the friction i mean the touch between my hand and paper it is really comforts me so i think that's yeah that's why i i, I like paper and and i like ballpoint pen because it's the tool i grow up with and maybe many people as well and it's and as i said in the talk i i can just focus I, I don't have to be distracted by, by, by cleaning and, and, and coloring. So it really a way for me to focus. Um, yeah. Just interesting. Thank you for the beautiful presentation. I just wanted to know, in terms of process, how do you find your inspiration every day? What motivates what you do and what, why you do it? My daily motivation. Yes, and why? What, what makes you do what you do? What makes me do what I do? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, because I have to finish the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started this, so I have to finish it. I have to, um, yeah. Um, um. Deadlines works for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> every, yeah. Every day is a deadline. Um, <laughs> um, um, well, I think, I think I can refer to the the, the Hong Kong scroll first because maybe I I didn't say enough in the talk. Um, um, well, because I, I started the drawing in 2019, and I mean, it was a very difficult time, as everyone knows. Um, and for me, I just said drawing is a way of healing. So I really needed that. And then, but I just, um, I, I could only finish two meters because too, too many things just distracted me. And, and so until um, the gallery invited me to a summer group show in 2022, um, then I suddenly realized I can use the open space and I can stay there and I can draw. So I think why not use this opportunity to get to know people, get to know people's stories. I mean, I mean, it's, it's relevant because I want to uh, use the drawing as a representation of the people's mind. So I think it would be good and relevant to listen to real people's stories while, the draw, while I draw. So that means the line will contain the people's stories and emotions and thoughts and and so I think yeah, so um, yeah. To, so I have I really I'm really grateful to uh, to the gallery, which really gave me the space for six months. Um, and then because of that, I I I saw a chance um, that K11 uh, had an open call for artists and to go to their artist village in Wuhan for a two month residency. So uh, I applied and then, um, but I, I, I didn't do too well because I, because the location was quite far away from the city center. So I, I didn't have many people coming to my studios. And, and so I think maybe I, I should um, go out. I should, um, yeah, see the city. And very luckily, I, I met um, the photographer, Li Wei, and he's very interested in, in abandoned sites. And he is a photographer himself, and he taught me a lot about the history of the city. And so, um, yeah, we, we went to many, many different places. And, and yeah, that's, that's why um, it opens up another dimension for me. I think the, um, what you said about chaos and distractions, I really resonate with that. Um, I'm curious, like, except drawing, uh, which is your um, professionalism, except that, do you find other um, actions or behaviors that can serve as your ritual in your daily life? Because I think... Um, rituals sometimes come very naturally in your life but if we don't have fun and we, we don't practice arts is there anything else that we can do as a ritual to us? Um, well I think the the first poem I mean that's a great way I mean it depends on how you see in in your in your daily action in how, how you see your, yourself in, in life, actually. I mean, he just talks about raising a glass of water and it can congregate all kinds of 
faith. I think it's very powerful. I mean, it's just a twist in your mind, how you, how you see this thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's very powerful, it's creativity. Um, so, um, I think when I, when I walk along the city, just, just walking or taking a bus or empty out, when I see plants, a tree or flowers or just grass, I just say hello to them. <laughs> I think that's my ritual. I've, I've, yeah, I started it when I was very little. Thank you. Wonderful. I think that's a great way to to finish it off for, for today. One more big round of applause for Pong Yao. Thank you. I want to invite you up one more time, Pong Yu, because Nick has made a beautiful piece of art just for you. Really? So everyone, really? please give Nick a big round of applause. Oh my gosh, thank you. So it's obviously an homage to your piece. Uh, I didn't have the courage to start a 12 meter long scroll, so I did this uh, 297 millimeter long piece. Um, and instead of using the ballpoint pen, I think I just repeated your ritual, but instead oh, I'm wow. using a knife uh, instead of a pen. So oh yes. Usually the gifts I do for Creative Mornings, it's a digital production, but this one is uh, cut by hand. You kidding me? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh, really? It's for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be weird if I keep it. It's <laughs> no, I, I keep it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.